All right. Well, no. What I'm saying is that I had a long gap. Um, that my art school was very split between figurative and hard edge. Okay. So, what, what art school did you go to? Um, I attended uh, Liverpool Art School, as it was called at the time, which is the same one as John Lennon. He was slightly before me. <laughs> um, and I was in the fine art. I did fine art yeah. painting. Um, and the uh, fine art that I did was that I was, I was one of the new diplomas that was actually introduced. Um, so there was a tendency for the figurative art to painting to, to dominate. Mm. Um, and then there were sort of kind of new characters who came in, in, into, the, into the scene over the sort of three years. Um, and at the time when the John Moore's uh, exhibition used to be uh, held or competition, we, ha we had some very dynamic teachers who were far more sort of towards the sort of kind of abstraction and in particular um, hard edge. So there were, there were certain studios that were really dominated by one or other. Um, so you would have kind of a Slade-trained person doing constant sort of kind of life painting and figurative work in one room. And then in another room, you'd have this um, people running around with masking tape. And, <coughs> and Did that interest you more? Well, it divided opinion so much that I basically ignored it and s sat in the middle, really, and just probably did my own thing. And, and the other thing at that time was that women very rarely made it in terms of being an artist. It was very male-dominated. It was very working class. It was um, very uh, much at a time that, you know, Liverpool was particularly musical, vibrant, lots of things going on. So wow. it was a, it was a, a really humdinging uh, experience. Um, and then other responsibilities came along and I... I started to be perhaps more political and I probably looked at art in a very different way. So I had about a 30 year gap. How, how do you mean? Well, um, fine art particularly was sort of kind of very removed from everyday sort of life. Um, but when I was just finishing up there was the art school movement which were, where lots of occupations took place yeah. right across the country. In, in, this was May 68 onwards. Um, and I think that actually began to influence me in another direction, which is around either direct action or around sort of um, political things that were going on. I mean, a lot of people, that was the first time they came into contact with something that was not their parents' views. Mm. Um, and the art colleges were ahead of a lot of the universities in terms of radicalism. Um, and we had, um, I will ramble here, no, but it's, it's, you know, we had Yoko Ono come and do a happening. We had uh, John Hartfeld, the collagist from East Germany, come and do a lecture. What's happening? The happening that took place was where she basically uh, had her partner with her, got in a black bag and, and um, uh, either simulated or had sex. In the bag? Even to the point that a cigarette smoke came out afterwards. <laughs> oh, nice one. We were impressed. Yeah, yeah. But John Hartfeld was much more influential because he was a, 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 a collage artist who did um, amazing anti-Hitler stuff, anti-fascist yeah. stuff during the 30s and 40s. And, uh, you know, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an exile, um, lived in Britain and... Um, his, his work is well, you know, worldwide known, mm. you know, and his images, yes. Amazing. So, lots of influences as well, because, yeah. you know, Liverpool itself was actually always really sort of kind of in a tumultuous, difficult um, situation outside, outside the bubble of, of art college, university and all those things. You go and teach in a place like Liverpool and you really hit poverty. You really hit bad housing. You really begin to understand why people are who who are they are. But it's also a very creative city. Because I left it a long time ago. So mm. thirty years later, what made you decide to go back to it? Well, I mean, I had a sort of te tenuous connections because I lived in Whitechapel, and so I had the Whitechapel Art Gallery near me. I, I also made attempts to sort of um, you know rent a studio and get painting again. Um, but probably I was surrounded by young British artists who were very arrogant and very ageist and who uh, occupied the spaces 
near to me in Cable Street, this was, but who never talked to me and, and who were sort of doing things that were, you know, really not, not from the background of art that I'd known. So it's very difficult to have a, a long gap from what you were taught or what you practised to coming into contact with, with people who were sort of kind of straight out of art college themselves but who really only, only, only related to people of their own age group and background. Why was that blue? Well, like that, is, that is how a lot of people, I suppose, relate to the art world. Um, I'm, I'm not complaining about it. it, it just didn't influence me. So, in fact, um, I, I, I um, was a politician, a local politician for a long time in, in um, it was Tower Hamlets, and also that I was representing the ward that actually had the Whitechapel Art Gallery in. So, in fact, I was in and out quite a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Nick Sorota was the director there. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah, and I had a year of trying to, in a way, sort of, find the subject matter or find what I wanted to do until really I began to, and this was Cambridge, and Kettle's Yard was there. There was a great set of artists who were established or um, were sort of kind of more abstract than figurative. I went on a range of courses, including printing, that I think began to sort of open my... um, techniques up so I mean if, if, if for instance I, I talk about printing you know you can do all kinds of things with printing that you maybe didn't plan in in, in the first place mm. because you're adding layers you're scratching you're removing things you're blocking out you're using color um, you're doing your composition on a, on a small plate you, you know there's all sorts of techniques in printing that are really really useful to painting um, and I then started to do much more sort of kind of open landscape work. Um, I also had a job right out in, 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 in the country where I was um, in a, I was work, working as a, a kind of uh, legal representative, like a lawyer, for asylum seekers. And I was inside a detention centre, you know, for hours and hours and hours, looking out through the fences at this amazing landscape and, and skyscape um, and that influenced me a lot mm. and on my days off I was really producing quite a lot of art but I did a, a long trip um, a, a, around parts of South Australia and I've, I've put a painting in which actually reflects uh, looking at the landscape from above uh, with a river, the, the Murray um, and, and just really sort of looking at it from the point of view of paths and territory. Um, and the landscapes that I've shown also in the past, which I did in Germany, is a contrast between the land in this country is, is barriered and fenced and hedged, and there's no open, what we would call common land. You go to Bavaria... And there are no fences and no, you know, it's, it's much more of a common uh, approach to it. And so when you're driving through it, you don't see, you don't see who owns which bit of land. And I did a, a, a picture about orchards because very often I was staying with, with my friends and I'd say, well, can I go and pick the plums off that tree? And they would say, oh, we're not sure really, but it won't matter, there's plenty of them. Whereas in this country, that would be called scrumping. <laughs> Because somebody would own the yeah. apple tree and somebody would have a fence around it and you'd have to climb over in order to steal the fruit. Yeah. And it would be seen as stealing. Yeah. So I, 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 even if I do a sort of kind of a very um, abstract or traditional view of, of landscape, it usually has a subtle message in it, which is about my interest in who owns the land and why they own it. And what the consequences are for the community.